with this video I wanted to add um, some tutorials on how to use the follow me tool and how to generate some complex shapes and what we're going to do first is we're going to take a look at one of our precedents and that's Confluence Park and we're going to do something Confluence Park-esque. I'm not going to follow it exactly but I'll try to capture some of the nuance of the shape. Uh, here we can see an image of doubly curved surfaces kind of completing to make some arches. In SketchUp, we want to make a new file. We want to use feet and inches. There we go. And we will start, as before, with a 20 by 20 square and if I begin the square function and I see the blue dashed line we know that's going to be a square but I can type in 20 feet comma 20 feet and there is my 20 foot square additionally what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and raise it 20 feet and I key in the 20 feet so we have a box I think what I want to have left is a bottom side and one other side, so I'm going to use the selection tool to erase those faces I don't need. So making the box was an easy way just to make the L shape. Move this little guy out of the way, and to do that we'll use the move tool and control is copy uh, or command if you're on a Mac. Let's just move that guy out of the way. Next, I need to draw a couple of arcs. And there's a few different ways to draw arcs. Um, this one here wants us to set the center point first. And then uh, edges, so we'll use that one first. And it looks like this is, I'll just do four feet here. And we should draw that back, and we can see the X. This is a quarter circle. Then, I'm going to need to draw an arc this way, and we want to make sure it fits. So let's explore one of these other uh, tools. So let's try this one here. a little bit gnarly. Let's instead do, let's try a different one here. There we go. That's the one I want. Actually, I think I want to come down four feet on this. So to do that, we get a full quarter circle. So to do that, it's predicting that I wanted a four foot uh, line there and it left uh, so a little, little line there. Okay. Then I'm going to drop, let's do one foot down. Make another little reference line there. And these things at Confluence Park are going to be thicker at the bottom, so I'll go three feet there. There's a reference point. And I'll use one of the first two arc tools again, and it'll make shape I want. I, it looks like I want to do it a little bit thinner at the top. So because every time I draw a point on a line, it'll give me the two endpoints and a middle point. So I don't need another reference point. Just something like that. I'll go ahead and erase these guys and these guys and these guys with this tool. So what I have now is an arc shape that I can pull along this curve. It's really important that the line that you pull it across be attached to the geometry. So this line is attached at this point. Uh, for me, the follow me tool is in the push-pull function. 
and it's this weird torus shape thing. If you're on Pro, it's going to be in Tools, uh, somewhere up here, and you'll see Follow Me pool, Tool in the pull down. When you click the Follow Me Tool, it's going to first want you to select a shape, and what you do is you click and hold. And I'm going to drag it across that line. Sometimes it doesn't work the first time. Just do it again and again until you get the thing uh, worked out. So there's kind of my petal shape. And now what I'm going to do is Let's go ahead and bisect kind of this footprint here. I need to trim off some of those edges. And I don't know exactly where those edges should be, so let's just take a quick peek. Uh, it would be too far, but we can go ahead and push those up. And... I'm going to go ahead and you select two faces and then push those over, maybe. How about we just get rid of the line there? We can push it that way all together to where we're getting, looks like, the midpoint there. That would be a good clipping angle. And then we can essentially just do the same thing on this face. Uh, we're looking for a midpoint halfway that line, so if I just go ahead and pull this up to there, grab that face, this line is kind of in the way, so I'll clean that up. And I can clean that up too. And we'll pull this to the halfway point there. So now from the top that's about symmetrical and we have a little bit of the arc left there. From here out, I'm going to select everything here, right click, and with my second layer menu, I'm going to say intersect, intersect faces with selection. Then I need to get rid of those things that I use to make this thing, and I'll start with this line here, and I'll grab these things here, and we can see this left cuts on the piece we're trying to make. So let me grab those cuts, and I might have to do a little bit of fine grain cleanup, and we can get rid of these lines as well. SketchUp doesn't handle doubly curved surfaces particularly well, and sometimes it needs a little bit of extra work to get it really ready to go here. Additionally, I think I want to go ahead and give the foundation some depth. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this face here, but I'm going to leave these lines because those lines are going to be important for me uh, in just a little bit. All right, we'll use the paint bucket, and I'm going to pick uh, two different kinds of concrete. I'm going to do... Let's do a light concrete on the pedal itself, so maybe we can see some effect in the shadows. I think I've got all those pieces, and then I'll do a darker concrete on the pavement so we get a little bit of contrast here. Mm. See, there's a few leftover little guide pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and clean those up before I paint it. The paint tool ought to remember the last material I had, so I shouldn't have to go and recollect it. Now, at this point, for some of you, this is a new tool, but it's a tool that you have seen, and that is going to be the group tool. So... On that second level of command, by selecting this thing in whole, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say make a group. And we're going to do groups at greater length in the next video. Um, now I'm going to copy this over a few times and then we'll rotate it into position. Looks like we'll make, let's start with four. 
and we'll put these things together. So when it's a group, I can collect, select a whole object without kind of worrying about little pieces. And we're going to rotate it. And the rotate tool is done here with our move tool. So we need to pick it, then we can pick rotate. And we're going to have to rotate these on a series of 90 degree angles so that they come together. So that one I just rotated 90. This one I'll rotate 180. And this one I'll rotate 90 degrees the other direction. SketchUp generally assumes that when you're rotating and you're clicking a reference point on the gray area that it is going to be a flat rotation. So here was the one we started with. I'm going to go now move this one. I want to be careful to where I'm picking here. I want to pick that point. That point. To go there. It looks like I forgot to paint an edge, so oh, we'll be able to see the rotation because of that. And I'll just do another reference point and I'll set these things six inches apart. Now I'll do the same the other side. six inches apart and I've got a straggler over here let's move this one in position and six inches apart so now we have a structure that bears some resemblance to the Confluence Park, at least as a system. And what I could do now is pretty easy. I've kind of left these grab bars over here, so I can actually take many of these things. Because of the way I've grouped them, they're each individually grouped, they're easier to grab, to adjust. And let's just do one more and then we'll erase some of them, so it kind of has a similar effect. So let's go ahead and copy this. Now on this one I'm going to actually just use a different reference point so I don't have to deal with the offset. And there we go. So now we've got some of these dome-like things in here and I'm just going to go ahead and erase a couple of them so that we get some similar effect the Confluence Park has. We go over here to our visual control we can turn shadows on which might make this thing a lot more interesting uh, and if for some reason I think well maybe I made these things too short we could always use the scale tool and change the proportions in this case I think I want to make mine taller so I can do that all together after the fact and what we get are these interesting Kind of rainwater catchment systems, which was the concept, the conceptual basis for a Confluence Park. We kind of get some interesting pairs. And now we can set our little little person uh, inside. 
Here's another tool, the pan tool, which sometimes come in, comes in handy to dial in uh, a view. Whenever you kind of get a view that you spend some time doing, it's best to go to view um, and just make a scene so that you could then get back to that view. And I did want to point out, while we're here, that if I change the time, let's change the time of the day and the month as a piece between scenes. I have two scenes now and I can play. I want you to see that you can actually animate the solar conditions between scenes. In addition, pause that. Pause, there we go. In addition to uh, making multiple views here. So I'm going to make the shadows a little bit more dramatic here. And then I'll jump up and make a new scene there. Plus, so we'll actually be able to see a new scene. And then maybe I'll actually look at a, a real quick different view all together. So I've generated five scenes here and then I can play the five scenes and the shadows are actually animated with the scenes. If you hear a squeaking, it's my chair. Sorry. And it looks like we're about 17 minutes. I was trying to do this demonstration in uh, 10, so it's a little bit long, but I think this should give you some real clues as how the um, rail tool works. And before we leave here, I mean the follow me tool rather, and uh, before we leave here, I'm going to show you another application of this tool. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this off to the side. We might as well stick to our 20 uh, foot by 20 foot square. Uh, and I'm going to do some stairs. So to draw stairs, I'm going to go down, let's say, 4 feet. 4 feet. That would be 8 steps, and we might actually duplicate those. But the tread is going to be one foot. I'm going to be able to find that dot. Then we can go down six inches. And it looks like we're working all in the flat plane here, which is fine. This is kind of off to the side of the square. One foot, six inches. And once you get a couple of those, it's just as easy to pick a couple of those lines and then copy copy them to make uh, the rest of your stair. Square that off. That should go ahead and make a plane that way. Now what we need to do here is we need to rotate this stair uh, downward uh, on this face um, and what I'm actually going to do real quick is I'm going to pull it off. To do that, we need to copy it. It's still in the same plane, still in the same line, and I'm actually going to erase a bunch of what I just did here. I'll just make things a little bit easier. So we want to rotate. We want. I'm trying to make a half round stair. So to make a half round stair, now I'm going to go ahead and draw using one of those circular tools we used before. Let's do a half round stair like that. And we want to stand this up and get this in a position where I can use it on this curve. A lot of times when we need to rotate something three-dimensionally and we have flat pieces around, it's best to make a little tool. So I'm going to make a little square over here to guide my rotational efforts. Um, it's on the axis that I'm working on. I'll go down here to my rotational tool. And we need to rotate this thing 
90 degrees up. So you can kind of see how that works. And then I need to attach one piece of this geometry to the geometry that I'm going to sweep. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. And I can erase my little cube over here. It might be easier just to window around it to get rid of it because that has served its purpose. And while I'm at it, before I sweep something, I'm going to go ahead and apply the material to both sides of the stair. And then we'll use the Follow Me tool. Follow Me tool is on the Push Tool button or under the Tools. And we'll just sweep that stair across. I've noticed that a lot of times, the first time out of the gate, that Follow Me tool doesn't work completely the way I want it to. And when it does that, I Control Z and then I just pull it again and it seems to be more cooperative the second time. And in this case I'll go ahead and I'll make this group so I can move this all together quite easily and let's just go ahead and add that to our project over here. I'm not sure that these stairs are designed for this project but The follow me tool. Thanks. Um, I think uh, that everybody should be able to make more or less this model. So now would be a good time to try to follow through uh, the steps of this project until you kind of get a similar shape. And by no means do I want everybody's project to be made of shells. Uh, this the intent of this video is to show you how uh, to use SketchUp to make some more complex shapes.